show you question two. Question two, uh, they, they are all the same, but with a slight variation. So let me show you question two. Question two says, given that tangent A is 3 over 4, A is between 180 to 360. So right now, there's only one angle, which is, tang uh, which is A. So the key, uh, the key is this. The very important key point is to determine where the angle is, which quadrant. Remember, in trigonometry, all the angles are within the unit circle. You have to determine which quadrant it is in. So they say that A is within 180 to 360. That is actually Q2 or Q3, right? So now the problem is this. A cannot be both in Q2 and Q3. It must be only in one particular quadrant, right? Which quadrant is that? Which quadrant is that? By looking at the value, it's 3 over 4. 3 over 4 is positive. So tangent is positive in which quadrant? Quadrant 3, right? So the third quadrant. So you know immediately that A will be in the third quadrant. So now you form your triangle uh, in, in the third quadrant, okay? So you're going to draw it this way, yeah? You're going to draw it this way. Let's put it here. So the triangle should be like this. And this would be A, okay, that's for question 2, uh, the A for question 2. And now it says tangent is 3 over 4. So basically, opposite is 3, and this is actually negative 3 because it's below yeah, the y-axis. Okay, and uh, 4 adjacent is actually also negative 4 because it is on the left part of the x-axis. Yeah, so, so that, that is uh, 3 over 4 and therefore giving you the hypotenuse as a 5. Okay, so now you have a complete triangle, right? You have a complete triangle. So what you do is you just do the same thing. Tangent A plus 45. So I'm going to show you A, yeah? We're going to do 2A over here. So it says that you've got to find tangent A plus 45. So according to the tangent formula, tangent A plus B, you just put it in. So that's tangent A plus tangent 45 over... 1 and it's a minus yeah if it is a plus the bottom will be a minus so minus tangent a times tangent 45 okay so now now you substitute the correct uh, numbers all right the correct fraction substitute the correct fraction and you will get your answer so tangent a is 3 over 4 right that's already given tangent 45 is 1 yeah, you should remember. You should know about this by now. Huh? This is one of the special angles, 30, 60, and 45. So 1 minus tangent A would be 1 minus tangent A is 3 over 4 times tangent 45 is 1. So if you press your calculator, you should get a 7. Yeah, that's it. That's it for 2A. Okay? And now, if you realize the same technique is this, yeah? Based on the question, form your triangle. You must determine which quadrant the triangle is in based on the positive and negative that is given to you. Form the triangle, get all the sides, and you will be able to answer all the question based on the formula, whether it's cos or sine or tangent, yeah? Okay, so now, sine A plus uh, 30 is the same thing. Um, sine 30 is actually half, so you actually don't need to know it. You know, I mean, you can just put in half there into the formula. And you have sine A from the same triangle. Sine A would be uh, negative 3 over 5. Yeah, so just substitute it into the formula of uh, sine over here, and you should get your answer. All right? Okay, now, uh, let's have a look at question 3, yeah? I'm going to go through question 3 and just give you some guide, okay, on how to start off the question and you should be able to complete it on your own. Uh, okay, so now, given sine x is 8 over 17 cos, and I think Sabrina missed out, missed out an x here, yeah? When you type in the question, I'm sure this is an cos x because looking at the pattern of the next question is sine y and cos y. Okay, so now, uh, 1, 2, 3 is slightly different in the information given, but... They are all given so that you have a clue as to where the triangle will be, which quadrant. So now let's look at it. Sine x is 8 over 17. From this information alone, you can imagine that sine is positive in the first quadrant and ASTC, the abbreviation, and sine is also positive in the second quadrant. So do you know whether it's the first or the second? You do not know from this information alone. And remember, I told you that it has to be in just a single quadrant, cannot be in both the first and the second quadrant. Then you will have two triangles. Then you will have two values. So that won't be correct, yeah? Now, so you have to determine whether sine x is in the first quadrant or the second quadrant because they're both positive. Now look at the next information given to you. They say cos x. The same angle for cos is negative 50. 
18 over 17. So the moment you see negative for cos, you know that this has to be in the second quadrant or the third quadrant. But because x is also positive, therefore the only option is that x must be in the second quadrant for x sine to be positive and cos to be negative. Yeah, I hope you can follow. So for question 3, I'm going to draw question 3 over here. So question 3, I'm going to draw uh, a new triangle. Each question, you have to draw your own triangle, yeah? So this is in the second quadrant for x. Okay, second quadrant will be like this. So this will be your x. Okay, so now it says that sine x is 8 over 17. So sine is positive, yeah, up vertically, so that's 17. And that is negative 15 because cos x is negative 15. So you have drawn your x. So now do the y, okay? So now there are two angles here. So do the y. Let's draw. Okay, now first determine which quadrant it is in. It might not be in the same quadrant, yeah? So sine y is 3 over 5. Positive again, so it's either 1 or 2. Quadrant 1 or quadrant 2. Cos y is 4 over 5. Now cos is also positive. It is not possible for cos to be positive in the second quadrant. So therefore, for both sine and cos to be positive, they have to be in the first quadrant. So now, for y, the triangle will be like this. So this is y, and there, and it says uh, sine is 3 over 5, so this is 3 over 5, and 4 is over here. So the first task, which is the most important task, is to form the triangle. If your triangle is formed correctly, you will have no problem answering the question. Sine x minus y, cos x minus y, tangent x minus y. They are all formulas. Substitute from the relevant formula. Find the relevant cosine or tangent from your triangle. Substitute in, use your calculator, count them, like what I showed you just now, and you will get the correct answer. Okay, that is the technique to answer this sort of question. So I hope you can get the answer. If you have any more questions, you can actually just continue to put a comment under this post. Happy learning!